So, as we know that the tuberculosis is a disease which is multi-systemic involvement. It is involving all the organs except the hair and nails, which are actually the dead uh, cells. So, this tuberculosis, when it involves any organ, there are signs and symptoms are there in the patient. And then you have the uh, other uh, tests which we are conducting for the tuberculosis. So, symptom-wise, patient develops fever. If the patient is having lung involvement, it is cough, breathlessness. And if the patient is having lymph nodes and that is swelling in the neck, then these are the main symptoms by which we actually get a hint that the patient might have tuberculosis. Then it is anorexia, that is, the patient doesn't feel to eat. Then it is weight loss and fever, which is like low grade and with evening rise, which is there in the patients. So these are the main symptoms by which we pick up the tuberculosis. So the diagnostic tests are according to the organ involved. Like if we say it's a lung tuberculosis or pulmonary tuberculosis, what we call it as, most commonly we get to do a sputum examination. In sputum examination, we first see whether there are presence of this TB bacteria in there, which is TB bacilli, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Then we also have the tests which are uh, molecular tests, like to have a um, gene expert or true nat or we are also doing the other molecular tests like line probe assays. The gold standard is the AFB culture but it takes around 8 weeks to grow the tubercular bacilli. Hence that method is also being used for sensitivity test. Now we also have newer tests in which we can do a whole genome sequencing of tuberculosis in sputum and this test will tell about the drug sensitivity as well. This was about the pulmonary, but extra pulmonary also you can get the biopsy samples from the lymph nodes, the pus discharge from anywhere where there is tuberculosis foci. And we can subject these to the, these tests. So after this COVID-19, we have seen a sudden rise in number of tuberculosis patient. Many, many people told that this is because of use of inherent use of steroids and other drugs which lowered the immunity of the patient, but actually it was COVID per se. I do have uh, data regarding patients who never had used any medicines for COVID, but they developed tuberculosis. The incidence of tuberculosis has increased after this COVID-19 pandemic. The most important reason is the NK cells or the immunity which is lowered by the COVID-19 virus. And the diagnosis for these patients is similar to what we are doing for normal patients. So post-COVID, we are seeing lot many patients coming up with lung infections. So earlier days, we were never uh, used to see the patients with exotic lung infections like uh, fungal lung infections or we were not seeing much of non-tubercular mycobacteria. These, in, these infections have also increased post-COVID. There are lot many cases we have heard about the mucormycosis, which was happening during the second wave. The most uh, attributive factor was the use of steroids, but still COVID has been a very confounding factor for causing all these uh, respiratory infections. So the next crisis, what we suspect that it would be many infectious diseases which will come up in the lungs.